Porsche suitors. Enter Portia and Nerissa. In truth, Nerissa, my little body is weary of this great world. You would be, sweet madam, if your miseries were in the same abundance as your good fortunes are. And yet, for all I see, they are as sick that have too much as they that starve with nothing. It is therefore better to be seated in the middle. Superfluity comes sooner by white hairs, but competency lives longer. Good sentences and well pronounced. They would be better if well followed. If to do so were as easy as to know what were good to do, chapels would have been churches and poor men's cottages, princes' palaces. It is a good preacher who follows his own instructions. But this reasoning is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. Oh, me, the word choose. I may neither choose who I would, nor refuse who I dislike. So is the will of a living daughter curbed by the will of a dead father. Your father was a virtuous man, and holy men at their deathbed have good inspirations. Therefore the lottery that has been devised in these three chests of gold, silver and lead, where the one who chooses correctly chooses you. There is no doubt that it will never be chosen by any one but one who you shall rightly love. But what warmth is there in your affection towards any of these princely suitors that are already here? I pray you name them, and as you namest them, I will describe them. And according to my description, you may level at my affection. First, there is the Neapolitan prince. A. Eh, he's a colt indeed, for he does nothing but talk of his horse, and he makes it a great point in his own favour that he can shoe his horse himself. Then there is the county palatine. He does nothing but frown, as one would say. If you will not have me, you may choose any one you like. He hears merry tales and smiles not. I fear he will prove to be the weeping philosopher when he grows old, being so full of unmannerly sadness in his youth. I would rather be married to a death's head with a bone in his mouth than to either of these. God defend me from these two. What do you think of the French lord, Monsieur Le Bon? God made him and therefore let him pass for a man. In truth, I know it is sin to be a mocker, but he, why, he has a horse that is better than the Neapolitans. He has a fiercer habit of frowning than County Palatine. He is every man in no man. He has everybody else's characteristics, but no personality of his own. If a thrush sings, he immediately starts to dance about. He will fence with his own shadow. What do you have to say about Falconbridge, the young baron of England? You know, I say nothing to him, for he does not understand me, nor do I understand him. He knows no Latin, French or Italian, and you will bear witness that I do not have even a penny worth of understanding of the English language. He certainly has the appearance of a handsome man. However, he's so queerly dressed. I think he bought his tunic in Italy his breeches in France, his bonnet in Germany, and his manners from everywhere. Tell me, what is your opinion of the Scottish lord, his neighbour? He certainly has a neighbourly charity in him, for he received a box in the year from the Englishman and swore that he would pay him back when he was able to. I think the Frenchman became his surety and signed the bond under his name. You need not fear, my lady, in having to accept any of these lords. They have informed me of their decision to return to their homes and trouble you no more, unless you may be won by some means other than your father's imposition in depending on the caskets. I shall probably have to die an old maid, unless someone can win me over by choosing the right casket. However, I am glad that this set of suitors are being so reasonable and departing, for there is not one among whom I can favour. Do you remember, my lady, a young Venetian scholar and soldier, 
who had to visit us with the Marquis of Montferrat when your father was alive? Yes, yes. I think he was called Bosanio. I remember him to be a man worthy of praise. The four suitors are looking for you, madam, to take their leave. And there is a forerunner from a fifth, the Prince of Morocco, who brings word that his master, the Prince, will be here tonight. Oh, if I could welcome him as happily as I can bid these other four goodbye. Come, lead the way as we shut the gates upon one set of wooers and another knocks at the door. <laughs>